us singing and they love us and they hate us Don't want us to go I wanna see ya I wanna feel ya I wanna be at home tonight You're my brother, you're my sister Hey God, we'll miss ya Hi everyone! Welcome my dear Fiverr friends, it's Doris, otherwise known as Nitty Nina, on Ravelry and Instagram and welcome to episode 11 of the Nitty Nina Diaries. Very happy to be here with you today as this episode is going to focus on my experience and my trip to Rhinebeck 2021. I can't believe I actually made it up to Rhinebeck. As you all might know, the event known as the New York um, Sheep and Wolf Festival. It's held in Rainbeck, New York, upstate New York. And it was canceled last year, obviously, due to COVID. So I think it just held a more special place in everyone's hearts to be able to make it up there and reconnect with friends and make new friends and, you know talk with the people that get you when it's it's all about talking about wool and designs and making so again such a special occasion um so i'm very happy that i was able to go it's actually held on open field grounds otherwise known as the uh duchess uh fairground um and it's held in different pavilions that are opened from um either side and they have just pavilions set up and then they have some vendors that are outside and they have a lot of activities that have sheep wool um i'm sorry they have uh, dogs uh, shepherd dogs doing some frisbee acts they have animals um they have food um, just just a lot of things to do so you you would see not only fiber folks but a lot of local people family with their kids come to the to the fairgrounds just to experience just the beauty of being there um, I had been to Rhinebeck uh, 10 years ago yeah I think 10 years ago so quite a long time um, and that was my first Rhinebeck and I must say that that one that I went just still holds my number one um, place in my heart because everything was just perfect. The weather was crisp, cool, um, the peeping of the leaves um, just right on the spot. Um, all the colors of the leaves were just changing. You could wear your wool all around. Uh, whereas this year, Again, the the fact that we were all together made it special, although the weather was a little weird. Not much peeping of the leaves. Um, I really didn't see a lot of those 
amazing colors that you can see in upstate New York in the month of October. Um, and the weather was rather warm, as you might have seen from the video that I put in the beginning. It just, uh, I don't know, it was like people wearing shorts and t-shirts. And hi, Lily. And um, shorts and t-shirts. And, you know, we would try to put our wool on, but after like 20 minutes, um, it was just way too warm. Say hi. Say hi, baby girl. What bobo. Um... So, again, it was, it was rather warm. And then I think it rained on Saturday a bit. And then Sunday was a little cooler. Um, but nothing as cool that you would be wearing your, you know, all your wool. You could, but then you'd have to take it off after a while. I mean, again, people were wearing sandals and linen dresses and, you know short sleeves shorts so it didn't feel like that fall feel that you get um so yeah very very excited to to have the opportunity to go so i made it a girls weekend with my friends sheila and sally i know you've heard of both of them both makers actually sheila just uh, started embracing knitting so she was like oh wow um in utopia um and um, Sally's an embroiderer, but she felt since she has a lot of amazing wool and has her farm with goats and sheep. So a lot of animals to see here as well. We were actually trying to convince her, um, Sheila and I, for her to take a baby, a baby Shetland uh, sheep with her home. Um, yeah, I even made space in the car. I said, can I, you know, you can drive back home with it on your laps. But, no, we didn't um, get to convince her on that. But she did leave her card with the lady and her contact information. So she might might get a Shetland sheep. I don't know. But we left on Friday. And we were going to make it a two-legged two trip. So we were going to go to Rhinebeck from Friday to Sunday. And then Sunday night we were heading to Maine to go to Sheila's house and spend some time with, there with her. But, um, unfortunately, I... Uh, had a very stressful th month. Uh, my dad actually had taken the COVID vaccine and unfortunately got sick and was in the hospital for 30 days. So that was a little, very stressful um, and uh, kind of gained some weight due to that stress. But uh, thank God he's finally home. I, again, after almost 30 days in the hospital at his age, he's 89 and and a very um, good looking and good 89. But, you know, nevertheless, this this COVID hit him hard. And we're just so lucky and blessed to have him back home. And it, it took a little bit of a toll on his body. Um, I mean, it, it would take a toll on anybody's body, quite frankly. Being in a bed for almost, you know, 30 days is... is is tough so he has a, a long recovery ahead of him but you know working those muscles back to movement so thank god he's back home but because of that i just didn't want to stay um away from the area too long and i had some things to do so i just uh canceled that second leg and uh i'm a little bummed also because i was very excited to go to go to see sheila's new place in maine and just sit and knit with her and sally but we made the best out of the three days that we were together. So Sally and I actually left on Friday. Now, you know, New York Sheep and uh, Woolen Festival is is a long event in terms of different little activities that are happening starting, I believe, on Thursday. Um, they have an event in some near town. And then on Friday, they have um, Indian Tangled, which I'm sure you've all heard of. And then the actual show is Saturday and Sunday at the fairgrounds. So we left Friday around, I would say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you saw a little bit of footage in the beginning that I um, played for you um, heading out to the festival and on the festival. But I broke up some clips in different categories. Um, let me get my notebook here for my notes. Um, to kind of share with you the experience. So I will be placing kind of clips on regarding um the animals all the animals that you know you got i got to see the sheep the alpaca 
the llamas. Um, I don't think I took pictures of the rabbits, but I did put something on kangaroos. They had two beautiful um, kangaroos there. And then um, I also took the time. I was a little camera shy in terms of walking around with a camera on filming. I'm not used to that, so... Um, but I did film a couple of people that I was just stunned by their projects and I had to t kind of do a Christy Glass moves um, and ask them about their sweater and I'll put some of those clips in there because they were just beautiful. And then definitely I want to highlight in this episode um, some of the folks that I got to meet in person. I mean, for example... Christy Glass was there. Obviously, she she's there. She's an icon and a, certainly a staple in the show. Um, you know, where she films, what what are you wearing? I actually made it into that. Um, so I'm excited to see how that looks. <laughs> um, but she's a sweetheart. I mean, I finally got to meet her. She is as awesome, as beautiful, as genuine, as talented as you see her on YouTube. Um, and other events. So it was really sweet. I also got to meet um, um, Amy, Amy from La Bien Ame, uh And she was just, you know, wonderful. Um, and sweet and just everything. So warm and welcoming. Um, you'll also see a little bit on... Um, I speak about her all the time, Michelle Joyce. She's the owner of Woolens and Nosh, which is a yarn company that I have highlighted here. And there, she has beautiful striped yarn socks. Um, I actually went on her website because she was actually in Indie Tangled on Friday night. And her cornucopia, was, which was, I believe, her color for Rhinebeck, special edition sockway for Rhinebeck, sold out in a matter of seconds. I think you could still go on her website and order. So check her out. She has a, other amazing fall colors. As soon as I got back home, um, I went in there and ordered um, some of her fall colors. And I cannot wait to get home get them and then show them to you because they're just beautiful and I finally got to meet her we were like exchanging messages on Instagram and missing each other but on Sunday um on the second day of Rhinebeck I was able to um catch up with her meet her and then she introduced me to some of her great friends that she knows um Justin and Caleb from the the bearded pearl it was really nice to get to meet them they are amazing. Their personalities, I mean, shine. I mean, you obviously see them in their podcast and they just, you know, vibrate joy, happiness, talent, and just their their works, what they do, how they do it, their stitch definition, what they were wearing is absolutely beautiful. So you'll see a little clip of that. Hi, hey, Hi. Doris. Hi. How are you? Tell us who you are. I'm Justin. Michelle. Caleb. And tell us about the podcast. You know them. You've seen them. The Bearded Pearl. The Bearded Pearl. Woolens and Nosh. Woolens and Nosh. And great, great designers, makers. And I feel like I, I just went to heaven. Met the celebrities of my life. Look at <laughs> their work. He's wearing that spice sweater. By Andrea Mowry. Right? By Andrea Mowry. What are you wearing? Tweed side by... Uh, somebody. Tweed side. I feel like There's we're, not at, very the, many we're at the them. Oscars. Like, <laughs> what are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> this is the Eli Cardigan by Kate Oates. Beautiful. So make sure to follow them. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. A couple of other people that just, you know, their projects really resonated with me and just kind of, I was like in the ha moment. So let's just kick off right now and talk about. Um, what I did for Rhinebeck. So, I, you might have seen this in the last episode I started. It was just like, oh my gosh, I was like, shut up and keep knitting, shut up and keep knitting, because I really wanted to finish it, and I wanted to make this my Rhinebeck project. Although everybody usually makes a sweater, I wanted to do a shawl. And you saw this shawl, it's called the flower, uh, Pressed Flowers. I'll put it down here. By Amy Christopher's. 
and I finished it and I gotta tell you I had it like I looked at what was left from the chart and kind of divided it into the days I had for Rhinebeck and made that kind of my daily goal and I needed to get it finished by Tuesday um, prior to Rhinebeck so I can wash it and have it wash it um, block it and have it dry because I usually takes what two days to dry so I wanted it done by Thursday and then do a bind off and I'll talk a little bit about it um, but I am wearing it and I am so happy um, that I was able to finish this let me take it off for you I have a candle here on my left so I don't want to hit the candle but um, take a look so this is the Pressed Flower Shawl by Amy Christophers and this is from one end and then all the way to the other end and then that's the front and let me show you the back because the back actually has a very interesting a fact that I think could make this shawl easily reversible as you can see kind of those little sections here that look like the flowers now some people thought this was like fair isle and this is not fair isle this is actually slip stitching it looks very mosaic mosaic I'm sorry mosaic knitting um, where you slip stitches and you only use one color of the yarn per row um, and I use let me talk about excuse me let me talk about the yarn first so I used a kit from Prim Rose Yarn Company and again I talk a lot about the yarn in the last episode and they were actually vendors at the show and they're local they're from Pennsylvania from my neck of the woods so I went out they saw the um, she saw the shawl and she was like oh my gosh and she, her yarn is beautiful absolutely gorgeous so um, I used as the background this blue right here the one the main color is called um, to do, 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 primrose yarn Roan DK let me put that there. Let me see if you can see it. Roan DK. And it is a three-ply DK. It's 230 yards. It's 60% American Superwash Merino and 40% domestic non-superwash Merino. And it's locally mill spun and hand-dyed in York, Pennsylvania. And the color is cerulean. And it's this beautiful, rich blue, kind of tealish, which is gorgeous. And then the second color, actually, let me show you. This is what's left of the cerulean colorway. You can see it. It's just this beautiful, kind of blue, teal, more teal, more leaning towards teal. And then the background color, I mean, yes, yeah, the background color. The one that transitions to all these variations, as you can see, is this one also from Primrose Yarn, and it's called Daybreak. It's a homestead worsted yarn, and this one has... 150 yards and it's 100% superwash merino, three ply worsted weight, and again, hand dyed in um, York, Pennsylvania. So it came as a kit, and this is what I have left over. So I think I had three of these and three of these. Um, but I have plenty. I mean, this is this is quite a lot left that I can do something. Um, maybe mittens or something with that. So very happy. I didn't see many of these. I think I might post a picture of a lady or little video um, that she had. 
Oh, wow. Gorgeous. Right? Nicely done. Uh, thank you. Miss Babs. This was Miss Babs. Oh, um, Miss Babs. Look at those beautiful roses. The, uh, yeah, it was the Rhinebeck color from a couple of years ago. Oh, that is gorgeous. And then their coordinating stain. Yeah. Good for you. I was hoping to see you some more. Uh, you know me too. Pop it in here and you can see it. She was wearing one and she obviously recognized the pattern. And the pattern was, I should say, very, very recognizable because I had a lot of people come up to me and go, oh my gosh, that's the Press Flower Shawl by Amy Christopher's um, over and over again. And I was like, yeah, it is, it is. So it's like a pattern that's gaining popularity. Um, I highly recommend it. It was a joy to knit. It is actually spectacularly easy. Um, and it just, you know, it, it creates this end result that looks complicated and intricate, but it's actually very easy to knit. Um, couple of notes, and I did say this again in the last episode, so if you want to revisit, but the shawl actually starts right up here. Oh, where's the spine here? Right up here by doing a provisional cast on of six stitches. So I used kind of a bamboo um, yarn because um, it's smooth and when I pull it out, it doesn't fray or anything like that. Um, but one thing I do recommend is because you're going to do at the end of the shawl after you've done this provisional cast on, you're going to take those six, stitch, six stitches, divide them into two needles, three and three, and do um, a Kitchener stitch. Um, but sometimes with provisional cast ons, I don't know if you've experienced that. It's kind of hard to identify where, like, which is which stitch. So while you're putting them with the yarn and doing the provisional cast on, I actually put a, um, a stitch marker in each of the stitches to know exactly which six are those. Um, specific stitches. It makes it much easier when I pull the yarn and I put those stitches back on the needle. So you start right here and again when you start right here you want to really sit down and focus. Um, no distractions, no music, no television, no nothing because you really have to kind of trust the pattern. <coughs> I have a little frog Maybe it's all the talking and screaming I did in right back. Um, yeah, so just focus here. Um, this part I would be, I, I think is the most challenging, but not difficult. And again, it requires just focus. Once you've passed those like first five rows, you're, you're pretty much starting to get the hang of it. And then certainly as you keep on growing um, up to here, I mean, you really know that chart. You know what you're doing. You're able to read your work. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Until, let me turn it around backwards, you finish with this explosion. See how they're all like separated, these flowers, and at the end, you start repeating that pattern of flowers even more so. Um, and it gives you this explosion of um, flowers at the end. Now with regards to the change of color, as I alternated the skeins of the background color, this one, the, um, the daybreak color, I at one point wanted I realized I was getting a lot of the mustard and I wasn't going to get the this kind of a bluish raspberry again. So what I did is I kind of took the skein, unraveled it, and started looking for the point that had some mustard with a raspberry so I could start kind of changing it. And you can see it right here a little bit at the end that I kind of put that in. Lily, come here, baby girl. If you hit my camera, everything's going to fall. Come on, get up here. Get up here. She sees the shawl and she wants to come up. Come on, get up. So, um, oh, and then what I did, one thing that I really want to highlight here is that 
so I was going to bind off and then block it and then I was concerned or worried that if I bound off about the bind off so I reached the end of the shawl so as you can see I reach to this tip here and I have all of this and all of this on stitches and I was afraid that if I bound off and it was too tight and then I try to block it might just be just too too tight um, of a bind off and I was a little concerned about that so what I decided to do is so I finished it on Tuesday with the exception of the bind off and I put all the stitches hi baby girl I put all the stitches on a lifeline and then I blocked it for two days. I washed it, immersed it in water, and then blocked it. And then, hi, Lily, baby girl. And then I, I dried it for two days. Okay, you're going to see a babushka here. Are you ready for this? This is like totally. Oh, baby. Oh, duh. Are you wearing the shawl? Here, hold on. Wait. Oh, da googie. Oh. So Lily's wearing the shawl. So yeah, so I um, so I blocked it and um, and then but on Thursday I had to have it dry by Thursday. Then I put all those stitches back on the needle, and then I did what's called an Icelandic bind off. There's a lot of videos out there how to do this Icelandic bind off, which gives a very stretchy bind off, and um, it allows for that flexibility, and you don't have anything like tight. Um, is and I'll link it on the in the description box is a tutorial from Brooklyn Tweed on the Icelandic bind off, and he just. Jared Flood just does such an amazing job of explaining it and really up close because there's like a little trick you have to do when you're pulling off the stitches and you have to ensure that like there's a little X on your needle and that's really the key to the success of the bind off. So check that out because if you want to do it, I highly recommend it. And although it is a little tedious in terms of adding an extra step to your bind off, where again, you have to put all these stitches on a lifeline, block it, then put them back on the needle, and then do the bind off. It's well worth it because again, for the elasticity and the actual bind off itself, remarkably goes pretty fast. So I really think it's um, something that I would recommend to do because I just love the way it came out. And the colors to me speak fall. It's just that transition. See that raspberry I was telling you earlier? The mustard, then the raspberry. And then this section here, which I didn't show you, has more turquoise blue. Um, but that was my Rhinebeck um, shawl or my Rhinebeck project for 2021. So, again, very recognizable pattern in the show. So I was very pleased. And um, I forgot to tell you that on Friday night, we went out to a restaurant, Sally, uh, Sheila, and I, that I highly recommend. It's called Old Savannah. And it is in, doo -doo 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 -doo, in Kingston, where we were staying at. And it's like old southern food. There's BBQ smoked it was unbelievable quite busy everything was busy right because um obviously Rhinebeck has more than two three thousand people attending so i'm sure all the you know all the hotels are booked all the restaurants are packed and you know in this particular restaurant there was even a wedding party so I'll go figure but well worth the wait um which was amazing and then i want to recommend another great restaurant um if you guys ever go to Rhinebeck next year um was on Tuesday, I'm sorry, forgive me, on Saturday night, we went to Rhinebeck, the actual town, for dinner. We went to a restaurant called Terra Pan Restaurant. Um, delicious. Very, very good. We kind of missed, I think, the window of all the knitters going because we couldn't get reservations. 
um, like 6, 6.30. But when we got there, it was an 8.30, 8.15 reservation, 8 o'clock, forgive me, 8 o'clock reservation. And you could see they were winding down. Um, but that whole wave of, of knitters had left. But there were some that we obviously recognize, right, as knitters. As soon as we get there, we might not be at the show, but you can start spotting sweaters and creations left and right. And you're like, oh my God, look at her sweater. Oh my God, look at look at that. And look at this design. So it's just, it's a treat, quite frankly. Um, and my knitter friends were looking, I mean, my friends, Sally and Sheila were looking at me in my element of excitement with all my fiber friends and artists. So really exciting. So I definitely recommend those two restaurants. Um, if you ever want to plan on having dinner with friends while you're in Rhinebeck. So this was my finished shawl. Let me um, go back to my notes here. And... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, so I was talking to you about some of the people that were there that um, are famous. But you'll see on the beginning of the video... If you see one of the videos, there's somebody running in the right corner. You can just see her with green pants and a colorful sweater. That's Christy Glass. I spotted that from the corner of my eye. And then um, you also might have seen the lady with the cowboy hat, right? We know her very well, Chelsea Yarns. She was there. I didn't want to just, you know kind of interrupt her because you know she was talking with a group of friends um another gentleman opportunity to bump into unexpectedly and i was i spotted him from far away and i'm like lewis it was lewis boria brooklyn boy knits um oh my gosh it was so great to see him famous and his best friend for 32 years. 32 years, and yes. that's how young they are. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's that how young we are. That's how young we are. That's how Puerto Rican that, Brooklyn I, was. I love, I love that she says that. That's how young we are. Yeah, that's that's the best school. way to say it. And I feel like I, I've known her for a while. I mean that. <laughs> I'm so happy here. Are we filming or? I don't know. We are. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. oh, so we're in oh, Rhinebeck. Oh, I'm Hi. <laughs> so we're, we're in Rhinebeck and this beautiful lady. Oh, we're taking a picture of the <laughs> You should check him out. He's actually doing Knit Stars 6. So go check him out as um, Brooklyn Boy Knits on Instagram. Because he has a link, that direct link, that you can go in and use to get your ticket for Knit Stars 6. Again, it's him and a bunch of other amazing, talented designers um, that you get f access to, you know, one-on-one. -on -one class tutorials and he's going to be doing everything about hats designing the hat the crown of the hat um interesting features when you design for a hat so a wealth of information and to finally get to meet him in person you know we had met on camera because i did that vogue knit live with him um it was just amazing he was with her um his best friend and she was just you know a joy a charm um it's again it's like meeting family so very very nice um to meet her so let's take a moment and um before i start jumping into acquisitions i want to take a little moment here and give you guys a break um and check out a couple of snapshots or snap videos i should say of all the amazing animals including at the end something that i had never witnessed but had heard about which is um a nun comes and does a long walk with all the animals and it's pretty famous as a staple in rhinebeck so check it out and i'll be right back <laughs> Buffalo and a kind of hair. Some bullfrog with chug wolverines. Whipple whale, chipmunk, jack o' moose. One turtle whale, two bug bat, sound of the snail, long face cat. Black squirrel, coon, possum, wren, red squirrel, loon, and a south guinea hen. Home cat dog, wild otter rat, pelican, hawk, dodo, and bat. 
And he goes king around, she's stuck in with him. Hunger on my pillow and a baby, see him pigeon. Gonna be a black snake, high next night. Big game, hot catfish, blue and white. How's red to red, white bear do? Chicken deep peacock, bobbling crow. Are you drooling? Did 
I'm not allowed to leave, am I? Papa, it's going like that, you know, when you do that to the dog, see here, it's going like, uh. Bye, pretty little. I did, and I'm not allowed to leave. Oh. Look at you. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, I wanted to take them home with me, but I guess Eli and Lily would have not liked it. So let me show you a, some of the acquisitions I made. Also, I wanted to kick you off with this little brochure that would give you as you stepped into um, the grounds. It wasn't a long wait, but they made a really nice brochure um, for October 16th and the 17th. Um, that tells you just a little bit about the schedule, the event schedule, um, which was really nice to have. The other thing that I did not know that they were going to give this to you, complimentary with your ticket to go in, um, because it shows, it gives you a list of all the vendors and the booth numbers. And I had asked my friend Sheila, which was kind enough to print us the actual, um, 
vendor list from the website. So I didn't have to ask her to do that because I didn't know. Um, they obviously gave you um, a full little brochure. But the map also was very helpful that she printed out, which is a good, good thing to have. Um, if you're going with a group or yourself to just kind of get familiarized where you are in the map or meeting points with your friends. So this was the logo for this year. As you can see it, um, there was a tent and you might have seen it in the beginning of the episode. It was a full line. It was like super long, but it moved fast um, on t-shirts and souvenirs from the show. By the time I got to it on Sunday, everything was pretty much sold out. Um, and the only things they had were, I think we're doing, they were selling t-shirts from 2019 um, designs, but I didn't really get anything. So next time, I guess I have to make the line right off the bat and, and just purchase something. But I wanted to talk about the brochure and the design. So one of the first stops that I made and um, is a little booth, a booth that I found um, of felted animals. Excuse me. Let me put that over there. Felted animals. I'm going to pop in a video of it right now so you can take a look at it. So that video right there shows you just an array of different types of little animals. I didn't capture them all, but I've got to tell you, I was so impressed. Um, and the company is called, I'm going to show that to you right now. It's called Lanart.net, Museum Quality of pack -up Products Since 1979. And I'm sorry about the light there, the shine. But it's an amazing company and it's out of Huntersville, North Carolina. And the gentleman who owns um, the uh, company is named Angelo Ponce. This is his name. Hopefully you can see that. And what a wonderful gentleman. His, his uh, other counterpart that was in the booth um, David Hernandez, David Hernandez, was also a sweetheart. These are all um, little figurines that are felted, hand felted, hand, hand done by a group of Peruvian ladies, also Ecuador, Ecuadorian ladies. Um, so some from Peru, some from Ecuador, and as you can see here in the back of the brochure, you know, just the worksmanship. This obviously lady is weaving. It tells you all the history of the company. The, they do alpaca socks. Um, they just do a series of things. Hand knit little shoes. Um, I felt it, I should say shoes. And then the needle felted sculpture, a whole section on those little guys, which you saw on the video. And again, these are the ones that I I got. Are you ready? I think it's so cute. Oh my gosh, isn't that adorable? It's a little sheep. It's so, so well done. And it has like a little curly scarf. And the face, I mean, if you take a look at the face, hopefully it'll focus. It's trying to focus on me there you go um it's absolutely gorgeous the worksmanship is amazing um and i got this one too my friend sally as i was leaving she got some too oh my gosh i should if i would have seen it i would have gotten it she got the cutest most adorable mouse with a little backpack and a little um, cro um, crocheted um, little beanie and a hat. It was amazing. Oh, just lovely. Let me show you this one. Um, this is a little rabbit. Isn't that adorable? And it, look at that. Just you can see the pink it felted. It's so well done. 
So well done. So that was that. So I highly um, just recommend them. Amazing, amazing gentlemen. Amazing worksmanship. And um, you could go check them out um, at orders at lenart.net. That I look, seems like that is the website. Actually, um, for email or questions, it's orders at lenart.net. And then the actual website, I'm going to pop it in here, is www.lanart.net out of Huntersville, North Carolina. So go check them out. If you're looking for a Christmas gift, perfect. Perfect for a fiber friend. And you know what? It's adorable. You can put it in um, just the, the door handles. You can put it on the tree for decoration. So love it. So the next um, thing I wanted to show you that I purchased is... This is one thing that I've always wanted to get and hadn't. Um, and I wanted to see it up close. And I went on a booth. Um, and the booth is called Dan and Lorraine Tracy. Dan Tracy Designs. Let me show you that card right now. And this booth focused on woodwork. From spindles to all these other gadgets that I'm not familiarized with. Because I don't spin but just beautiful works of art. And then what, what I saw was the wooden bowl, the yarn bowl. So this is the piece that I purchased. Kind of this was the highlight for me. Um, I wanted to get something beautiful and unique. And it's a rather large bowl. So you could either put one ball, two balls, three balls if you're fair aisle, fair, doing fair aisle. But look at that wood. It is, he had different types of wood, but this is, this is birch. It feels like that soft cherry, actually. But it's just, I mean, holding it and caressing it feels so therapeutic. Um, and the inside, I mean, it's, it's, it's like silk to touch it. Very, very, very smooth. And obviously he signs it, Dan Tracy. Um, and I'm trying to read, oh, it's Sycamore, and he is out of Cortland, New York, um, Dan and Lorraine Tracy. So their website is dantracydesigns.com, um, and I'm going to pop that in here as well, so go take a look if you're looking for a beautiful bowl um, a special gift for someone or for yourself for Christmas and really want to treat yourself um, this is just beautiful it it, it um, it's perfect it's just gorgeous so that is that um, so the next item that I got um, the two other things that I purchased were I wanted to look for very specific, maybe rustic, uh, local hand um, um, spun yarn. And I found this company called Bare Naked Wolves by Knit Spot. And I'm sure you'll know, you've known Knit Spot because she is otherwise known as Ann Hansen, who's the owner and creative director of Bare Naked Wolves. They had a booth um, there with just unbelievable wool. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. I got to meet um, Ann Hansen, who had all her designs there, and as well as her marketing director, Kaya, um, and she was there as well, um, wearing one, one of these gorgeous Anne Hansen designs and, you know, just the setup of the booth, 
um, all her designs were displayed, all the, like the trunk show. You could touch it, feel it. I mean, they were beautiful. And then all, she had a whole section of patterns um her designs and how much skeins with the picture so you could purchase the pattern and then pick out the skeins and colors that you wanted right right there um on site um beautiful ladies amazing workmanship obviously she's Anne Hansen's very famous and I'm gonna pop in a clip here um where she speaks about you know the yarn and the process and the beauty that makes um, the yarns, bare naked um, wools, so special and unique. So go ahead and take a look. Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Say hi. Hi. This is Anne Hansen. Let me take She's my mask off. The so. designer behind all the amazing patterns <laughs> in bare naked wools. <laughs> and um, so Doris is here in the booth buying yarn for a new design, which I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, so all of our wools are completely undyed, no chemicals, just the soap to wash the dirt off. And um, so they're really healthy and they're healthy for the environment and they're healthy for you. I love it. I'm going to put her yarn in this bag now. So yeah, and that, that is Romney and Marino. She's buying the Kent DK. The Kent DK. But look at all the colors. It's unbelievable. And all these of these all designs are ants. Colors, all the colors come from the animals that we use absolutely no dyes. Look at this just beautiful work here. All of these designs. I love designing. I love designing this, but I love writing patterns too. So I, I, I love to make my patterns as understandable as possible. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, hi, Kaya. Let's say hi, Kaya. Hi, Kaya. Kaya's wearing the newest, um, Look at her the newest publication, the Champlain Pullover. It's knit from top down with absolutely, absolutely no seams. Not one. Yeah. It's absolutely that beautiful. Is, is and, and you guys, when you wash this yarn and touch it, it's like silk. It's, it's like so... Butter. <laughs> butter. We've been squeezing kind of. She's going to come home with black and blue marks. <laughs> Look at these, and this design here too. Look at that. Unbelievable. So isn't that gorgeous? I'm telling you, she's a sweetheart. And I got, as she was telling you, I got this beauty. Um, this is their Kent DK line. And this color is just gorgeous. It's all natural. The color is wet sand. And this beauty is 60% merino wool and 40% Romney wool. And it is absolutely gorgeous. And the, I mean, it's not even um, obviously blocked or washed, but you can feel the softness and it's just squishy. And all her pieces that she had displayed obviously had been blocked and, and, and finished. And when you touch this yarn in its final product, it, it, it felt like cashmere. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I've never knitted anything with Romney and Merino. So this was a special treat. And um, I am going to be making a shawl. Um, more on that later in other episodes. But it's something that I've been working behind the scenes. So can't wait to share that with you. But just again, beautiful yarn. Highly recommend her and just beautiful products all around. The other uh, kind of investment that I wanted to make was another local company. Um, these folks are out of, I believe, Vermont. Yes, Putney, Vermont. And they had a little booth outside near the Shepherd Collies. And this is the Boone Doggle Farm. It's actually registered fin sheep and cashmere goats. I'm going to show you kind of the business card here. And I, again, I will put and link this all in the description box below. 
but I love, first I love the name, right? Boondoggle. Now, interestingly enough, boondoggle, which I never knew, is can be, either be a noun or a verb. And as a noun, boondoggle is the work or activity that is wasteful or pointless, but gives the appearance of having value. And as a verb, boondoggle means waste money or time on unnecessary or questionable projects. Pretty uh, interesting, right? But look at that little logo right there with the little sheep. It's just so adorable. And they are out of Putney, um, Putney, Vermont, I said. And I really was interested in getting um, thin sheep, which I've never worked on. And I got this beautiful chocolate. This is their, again, Boondoggle Farm. Um, their Finn Worsted 2021. 100% Finn Wool 3 ply. Um, 125 yards. And this color is their darkest brown, it's called. Let me show you. See if you can see it on the light better. This brown, oh my gosh, look at that. It matches this brown on my nails. It's too funny. But um, it is absolutely delicious. It's just like a deep, deep um, cocoa chocolate brown. Um, just gorgeous. Very soft. Um, and I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to make with this yet, but... Um, this was the other one, uh, yarn that I wanted to splurge in. And again, their website um, is uh, boondogglefarm.com. And I'll be putting it here on the screen as well as the, giving you a link in the description. So those were kind of my three things, four if you will, that I wanted to get. I mean, from a yarn standpoint, I wanted to get just two special yarns. And then the bowl for me was like my Christmas gift to myself as a special treat. Um, so that is that. Now, going back to my notes, forgive me. Um, I want to jump into some video footage right now where you're going to see um, a couple of the people that had some amazing um, projects. Uh, so you'll go take a look at them right now, and I will meet you back here shortly. Look at this beautiful sweater. What's the name of the sweater? Spenson. And it's by Jared Flood. And he used uh, Arbor. Look at this stitch definition. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Yep. And... From Chicago, right? You yep. guys have a great men's group out there, Loop and Loop and Dudes. Loop and Dudes. So if anybody's out there in Chicago, guys, you should go out and check out the group and knit with them. And and your name again was Steven. Steven. Thank you so much, Steven. Thank you. So tell me about the the, the bag. The bag was a lot of fun. You can find the pattern on Ravelry. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name. Okay. But I enlarged it. I used a heavier yarn and a heavier hook. Okay. Used whatever I had in my stash. Any crocheter can figure it out. It's pretty simple. And I lined it. Oh, look at that. How gorgeous. <laughs> Makes it a lot of fun. Oh, and look at her sweater and your necklace. Thank you. With the Thank little... you. And what's the sweater? The sweater was a kit. Organic wool, pretty easy. You're doing like a fade. Um, it's just a square. Okay. Are you on Ravelry? Yes. Catch. Catch. K A T S C H. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, you ladies look beautiful. We didn't take photos. And this is stunning. Thank you. How cute. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sure, and I'll help you. Oh, my.
my God, look at these ladies with their beautiful. Okay, tell us the pattern. What's the pattern name? Bright Feather by Jen Steingast. Jen Steingast. Yeah. Steingast. Yeah. Look at those. Any yarn? Do you remember the yarn? Um, this was? I use Male Abrigo Dos Tierras. Ooh. This was Rowan uh, Baby baby Silk. Yeah, and Dyed in the Wool. It's been Psycho. And this is also Rowan Baby Silk with a local. Um, main color house. Stunning. Thank you. Don't you feel like you're in Hollywood when they stop you? And what are you wearing? Yes. Thank you so much. I'm like carrying the veil of the bride. <laughs> Are you in Vermont? Yep. Oh, Vermont. But it's just, it is. Oh my God. Yeah. Natalie from the Nitty Natty. And I kind of saw her and stopped her. And she, if you saw her le recent episode, was giving these little gorgeous little pins. So she gave one to me, and she was walking around with a Nitty Witch, um, and, which it was so nice to finally meet her, and she gave me a little pin, a little progress keeper with a little sweater held by its needles. So sweet, and she was an angel. Um, so it was just so nice to meet like people that you follow. Um, or you recognize them there and you're like, oh my God, I see her podcast. And it was just amazing. Just so much love, so much love. Um, hopefully when you saw the clips that I showed you, on um, um, the sweaters that really spoke out to me, you saw the gentleman that, um, he's part of that knit group in Chicago called Loop and Dudes. Um, wow. What a cable sweater from, um, from Jared Flood. And then the designer uh, capes that you saw pictures of, amazing. Um, that, I want to make sure I put that in my um, comments. Um, and one of the pieces that was really famous, everybody was taking pictures of, was this uh, lady, uh, pop a picture of her. And she, as you can see on the picture, was wearing... Just an unbelievable head-to-toe garment, knitted garment. Her handle name on Instagram. Um, but she's from Denmark. And just beautiful, beautiful um, work that she had on. So, wonderful. Well, you know, I think that pretty much covers everything um, on my trip. And I can't wait to see you guys on the next episode. Um, I'm going to start casting on something. I'm not sure yet, but I'm just still, again, just um, feeding off the excitement that was this weekend. And hopefully I'll get to meet you um, in the next Ryan Beck. Uh, I would love to do something like that where I get to meet you face to face and just spend some quality time and knit and get to know each other better. So thank you all for joining me and for sticking around and leave me a comment on anything that you saw that you really kind of loved or if you did go to Rhinebeck, tell me about your highlight and um, I look forward to reading your comments every time. So folks, have a great rest of your week and, and enjoy a wonderful weekend of making. Ciao guys. Bye. Other when 
to spring in the summer turned into fall when the spring came he went west he said i'm doing my best you're my brother you're my sister heck i will miss ya Thank you. 
I'm sick with you, did not know why I was a credit for a cure I'm a love for you, you know the show It's called Bare Naked Wolf by Nick Spot Yeah, the bucket was Broken but the water was pure Tell me I got here at the right if I did, it's probably the first time My second guess is a secret inside Tell me I got here at the right time Just tell me I got here at the right time and If I did, it's probably the first time My second guess is a secret inside Tell me I got here at the right time Tell me I got Tell me I got here at the right time Tell me I got Tell me I got here at the right time